Hi guys, so this is um, topic 5.1, which is about market research. And so we're going to start with invention. So what is invention? So invention is the uh, process of discovering a new principle which allows a technical advance in a particular field that results in a novel or new product. So invention is essentially making something new, which in, in fact is actually quite difficult. We'll talk about that later. Um, but, you know, basically all inventions are based on previous inventions. Um, we can talk about that later. So, you know, this is Henry Ford, uh, you know, and he said, we only live by the grace of invention, not merely by such invention has, uh, as has already been made, but our hope of new and as of yet non-existing uh, inventions for the future. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's talk about motivators for invention. So the things that motivate people to invent are personal, um, you know, it can be personal in uh, interests. Somebody can just be kind of a tinkerer. They're into something and they, they get good at making them and get better and better and, and then eventually create something uh, new. So somebody who just plays around with something is interested, um, you know, that's, that's uh, one of the motivators. Um, it might uh, assist somebody in making life better. You can click on this uh, link to read more about that there. So you may see somebody who has created something that just makes people's life better. Um, it might be with constructive discontent. So you're not happy with a, an existing products. So you can make a new one. And this is like Dyson. So this is a, a link to something about Dyson. So please do look at that link and read more about that. So basically Dyson was not happy with existing vacuum cleaners. So he invented a completely, well, not new type of vacuum cleaner, but he, he invented a new process and he went through some amazing steps to bring it to market. It's a very interesting story. Um, but he wasn't content with the existing uh, um, vacuum cleaners and that's why he uh, made a new one. It might just be an, an inventor to make money. That's a simple motivation. Um, it might be inquisitive scientific or technical thinking. You know, a lot of our, um, you know, pure research that happens at universities lead to new inventions. So that it can be that kind of thing. Um, and then it might be necessity. Maybe you actually just need something because it's time and it, it just needs to happen. The car is an example of this. Like cities back in the um, the days when cars were first invented were just essentially drowning in, in horse manure. They were, the only way to transport things in cities was with horses, and horses produce a lot of manure. So that was a huge problem in cities, and cars essentially saved cities. They were an amazing adventure, and of course, with every invention, you solve a problem and create a new one. So cars did that, of course. They created traffic and uh, congestion and noise and pollution, you name it. But they, you know, originally saved cities from uh, drowning underneath horse manure. So it's kind of an interesting idea. But yes, necessity is a driver of, of invention. Okay, so let's talk about the lone inventor. Inventor. So the lone inventor is someone who uh, works outside or inside an organiz organization and is committed to an invention of a novel product and often becomes isolated because he or she is so engrossed with ideas that imply change and is resisted by others. So there's tons of lone inventors. You can think of somebody like uh, Nikolai Tesla. You can think of somebody like Thomas Edison. You can think of somebody like Henry Ford, uh, Marconi. There's there's piles of, of lone inventors uh, going way back to somebody um, like, uh, um, I can't think of his name just now, um, the guy who said Eureka way back in the Greek days. Um, well, don't worry about it. Um, anyways, if you click on this article, uh, you'll see that that uh, maybe being a lone inventor is actually just a myth. Um, so uh, think about that, uh, please, and watch this link. Okay, so what's the advantage of being a, a lone inventor? Well, one of the advantages, you have full control. Nobody else is there with you. But, you know, you may not be a businessman. There's a reason that you have organizations um, that help you with diverse things like marketing and, and uh you know, making money off of an invention, you know, maybe you don't have that capability. So that, that can be a problem. Driven with a goal of, of, of complete, so you can be very driven with the goal of a complete invention or a new somewhat revolutionary product that may drive you. Okay. Um, you may not comprehend how, how, uh, 
how um, the marketing and sales of their products. So may not comprehend or give sufficient care to the marketing and sales of their products. Again, this is the disadvantage of being an inventor. You may not be good at being the salesperson or the marketer. Um, you might have ideas that are completely new and different. Um, and this is a problem also because some of their ideas and how different they are, they may be uh, resisted by employees and workers. This is, uh, if you're inside the uh, organization, that might help. But, um, you might have a harder time to push forward your decisions, especially if the market where large investments are required. So, you know, if you're trying to produce something like Henry Ford did, which is cars, you have to have a lot of money, right, to, to build up the factories, to, to buy the, the machines that make the cars. So that requires a lot of capital invention, uh, in, sorry, a lot of capital right? It's a lot of money that's required. And if you are a lone inventor, you may not have that money. You might be isolated and have no backing towards your design. So maybe, you know, you're just a lone guy, you come up with a great idea, but you have no way of, of um, actually, you know, getting it out there. And this is, you know, there's actually a show called Shark Tank. And this is an example where lone inventor is actually getting out there. But, you know, if they don't, they can be isolated and therefore they're their inventions uh, don't gain any traction, don't get to market, and then, you know, it's just a, a great idea that they came to nothing. Um, sometimes they have uh, trouble working with teams. Like when, when you create something that's that you spent, you know, years working on, and that's, uh, you know, often lone inventors do this, you don't want to give up that invention or give up control of that invention to, to an organization that might be able to help you bring it to market. So you might, you know, have an emotional attachment to your invention, and that can be a huge problem. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're going to talk about intellectual property. So intellectual property is a legal term for intangible property, intangible property such as the creations of the mind, such as inventions and designs that are used in a commercial setting. Intellectual property is protected by law. So intellectual property is an idea that you have. It's intangible. So that means you can't hold it in your hand, right? So it's a creation in your mind. And, you know, if, if uh, you can, you know, intellectual property, your ideas are protected by law. And we're going to talk about the different ways that your ideas are protected from the law or by the law. Uh, we're going to skip past those. This is a, a great video. I'd like you to watch it. It's on intellectual property. Make sure you click on that and watch it. Okay. Patents. So our first type of intellectual property that we're going to talk about are patents. It's an agreement from a government office to give someone the right to make or sell a new invention for a certain number of years. So a patent gives you the right to sell your invention for a certain, and this is very valuable because, you know, often when you, when you develop a new product, it's expensive and you need time to recoup from the market the expense that you went through to make that invention or to develop that invention. Uh, this, you know, this is famous for new pharmaceuticals, so new uh, medicines and drugs that, that companies make. They will get a patent on those drugs and, and basically no one else can make them for a certain number of years so that they will be able to, you know, recoup all the research and development that they, they put into it. You know, this is going to happen with COVID-19 with uh, um, the vaccine for that. Whoever, the, whichever pharmaceutical company creates the first COVID vaccine they're going to make a huge pile of money on it, but they've also outlaid a, a huge pile of money to make that vaccine. So that's uh, patents protect you for a certain number of years so that you can recoup losses. Okay, copyright. So copyright is a legal right that grants the creator of an original work exclusive ownership for its use and distribution, usually for a limited time and with geographical boundaries. Copyright allows the creator to receive compensation for their intellectual efforts. So what we're looking at here is the legal right to use your work, okay? So, you know, often when you think about this, you can think about it as, uh, um, like, books are copyrighted, uh, music is copyrighted, films are copyrighted. Um, actually, there's been some interesting legal um, disputes in the States where people have taken... Um, YouTube video or films that people have created and uploaded and have modified them uh, and basically they, they end up uh, making money from that that video so that can be a huge problem it who owns your content 
right? It's limited in time, so that means you don't own it forever. In fact, we'll get to that. Uh, it's called public domain, so eventually you lose copyright, it just goes away. And then within geographic boundaries, right? So that's, you know, within particular countries or regions like the EU. Okay, um, and that basically allows you to get paid for your intellectual effort. Music is a big, you know, part of this. So, you know, back before there was Spotify and Amazon Music and things like that, um, people would often download uh, music from, from online. And basically the artists who create that music then don't get paid, right? So that's a huge problem. Like if you're not getting paid, well, you can't afford to make the music and then, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll go broke. So it, copyright's actually very important and you should get paid for your intellectual efforts. Okay, trademarks. So a trademark is a symbol, word, or legally that is, uh, or words, sorry, that is legally registered and established uh, by use as representing a company or product. So, for instance, the Nike swoosh is a trademarked symbol. Okay, let's do it, or uh, just do it. Sorry, just do it. That would be a um, words or words that is legally registered to Nike. Okay, um, and basically it represents that. Okay, and then you're legally protected at that point. You cannot, someone else cannot put the Nike swoosh onto their products without um, checking with Nike first. Okay, public domain. So public domain is when something, you know, created uh, copyrights are gone. So basically over time, copyrights go away. You know, uh, it's, it's quite long. It's like 70 years or something like that. Um, so also there's, there's um, places that, you know, for instance, there's photos online where people will will give up the copyrights to their photos so that anybody can use them. So that we call that in the public domain. First to market is a very important concept with uh, invention. So if you are the first product of its type to be released in the market, you stand to make a lot of money because your competitors will essentially not have a, uh, any sort of way to, um, you know, they'll have to develop a product. Uh, that is similar to what you develop, and that takes time. And so during that time, you can be the the um, person to make the most money. And Apple is classic on this, right? Like the iPhone was the first smartphone that was out there, and it made a lot of money until Samsung came along, and you know all these other companies came along and basically created their own version of the iPhone. But they were the first to market, so Apple made a killing on iPhone. Okay, um, speaking of iPhone, so there's something called shelved technology. So this is a, a technology that is shelved for lots of different reasons. Sometimes it's just too expensive to develop. Sometimes you might want to um, shelve it and bring it out later. And in fact, that happened with the iPad. So basically, and this, you can read this article about it, um, the iPad was shelved by Apple. It said, you know what, I'm going I'm to stick this on the shelf. And because I want to develop the iPhone. So they, they spent the time that the iPad was on the shelf developing and pushing out the, I, uh, the iPhone. So shelf technologies can be rediscovered. They can be taken off the shelf. So obviously we have iPads now, so it didn't stay on the shelf. But, you know, they, they put that, uh, the iPad on the shelf and it was developed before the iPhone so that um, they could have time to work on the iPhone. All right, that's 